everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Wandering Poncho, which you can see here in the photos in front of you. As well, if you head on over to richtexturescrochet.com, you will find some more photos. I do have my sample here, although because of its size it's hard for me to show the entire design here. But this is uh, the neckline and then uh, down into the body. This poncho is a very cozy poncho. Uh, it's um, worked by making four crochet squares that are then crocheted together and then in the end you will work this very textured uh, neckline and then as well it's similar down at the bottom for the edging. This uh, design has been worked in Wander Yarn by Furls Fiber Arts, and I want to take a moment to thank them for providing yarn support for this project. Uh, Wander is a super soft uh, acrylic yarn. It's very silky. It's 100% acrylic, worsted weight, uh, and it comes in a variety of colors. The color today that I'm using is called Tundra, and that's the one you'll see in the photos as well. For this project, it is available in two sizes, a ladies small and medium, which fits a bust size of 32 to 38 inches and has a 24 inch length, and then a ladies large and extra large, which fits a bust size of 40 to 46 inches with a 34 inch length. Now for the small medium size, you're going to need about 10 balls of the water yarn for the large size you're going to need about 12 and in each ball there's about 120 yards of this worsted weight yarn. You're also going to need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Links to all of these items as well as the free written pattern which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Links to all of these can be found in the description below. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. Uh, there's many other crochet patterns and free stitch tutorials that I am sure that you'll love. Uh, also, don't forget to say hi down in the comments, and uh, I can't wait to see your finished ponchos. Now our pattern today is worked in rounds, and we're going to work it by making four separate squares that we're then going to crochet together and then work our edging around. So what we're going to do to begin working our first square, and this is the same for both sizes at this point, we're going to start by making a slit knot and then by working a foundation chain of four chains. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into that first chain to form a ring. You're then ready to begin round one. For round one, you'll start by chaining three. This chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. Next, work two double crochet stitches into the center of your ring. Chain two and work three double crochets all into the center of the ring. You're going to repeat that two more times. Chain two, work three double crochet stitches into the center of your ring. chain two and work three more double crochets into the center of your ring. Chain two and join with a slip stitch into the first stitch which is the top of your chain three. That brings you to the end of round one you'll have a total of 12 stitches, 12 double crochet stitches. For round two, chain one, 
and half double crochet into each stitch across to the next chain two space. So right now we're just working into the tops of our stitches, work in the same stitches joining, and then each double crochet uh, all the way across, we're working three half double crochets. When you come to your chain two space, into this chain two space, work two half double crochet stitches, chain two, and two more half double crochet stitches. You're then going to repeat all the way around. Work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way across to the next chain two space. Into your chain two space, work two half double crochet stitches, chain two, and two more half double crochet stitches. Repeat that all the way around. When you come to your final chain two space, you're working your two half double crochets, chain two, and two half double crochets all into the same chain two space. And then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. That brings you to the end of round two. At the end of round two, you should have a total of 28 stitches. For round three, chain one, and we're now going to be working half double crochet stitches into the third loop. To find the third loop of the stitch below, you're going to look at the back of the stitch and you will see this loop, and it could be hiding a little bit at first, uh, that runs alongside your top back loop. So if I'm looking at the same stitches joining, which is right here, you can see this is my top back loop. And then just under it, there's another loop right there. So you're going to be working into this loop of each stitch all the way around. So to begin, half double crochet working in the third loop of the same stitches joining, and then into each stitch all the way across to your chain two space. When you come to your chain two space, into that space work two half double crochet stitches, chain two, and two more half double crochet stitches all into the same space. You're then going to repeat. Working in the third loop, half double crochet. Now this first stitch sometimes gets hidden underneath of your half double crochets into your chain two space. So just remember that the top of this first stitch sometimes wanders into that space and you don't want to skip it otherwise your stitch counts will be off. So in the third loop, half double crochet in each stitch all the way across to your chain two space. And then into your chain two space, work two half double crochet stitches, chain two, and two more half double crochets. Repeat that all the way around.
once you come around to your final chain two space of your round three, you'll have two stitches here remaining. So you're going to half double crochet in the third loop of each of these remaining stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of your round three, you'll have a total of 44 stitches. For round four, chain one. Now going to work a bit more texture and in this round we're going to work alternating double front post double crochets and back post double crochets. So around your first stitch and I like to work around the starting chain one as well when I work this stitch you're going to work a front post double crochet. To work your front post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook from the back, or from the front, sorry, through to the back, around the post of the stitch and out through the front again. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. That's your front post double crochet. You're going to work a back post double crochet around the next stitch. Yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work and insert your hook from the back through to the front, out through the back again, of the, around the post of the next stitch. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. You're going to alternate back our front and back post double crochets all the way across to your chain two space ending with a front post double crochet. So I'm going to continue front post, back post double crochet, front post, back post. I have one more stitch here. I'm going to work one more front post double crochet. Once you come to your chain two space, into your chain two space, work two double crochet stitches, chain two, and two more double crochet stitches. You're then going to repeat that all the way around. Front post double crochet, followed by a back post double crochet. Repeat that all the way across to your chain two space. In that chain two space, work your two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets, and then continue all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of your round four, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Chain one. We're now going to repeat that last round except using this time front post and back post half double crochet stitches. So working around the post of this first stitch you're going to work a front post half double crochet. So yarn over Bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook from the front around the post, around the back, out through the front again, around the post of that first stitch. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then work a back post half double crochet around the post of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across to your chain two space. You should end on a front post half double crochet. Into your chain two space you're going to work two half double crochet stitches, chain two and two more half double crochets. You're then going to repeat that all the way back around 
until you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, and at the end of your round five, you should have a total of 76 stitches. At the end of your round five, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and chain one. For round six, we're going to be working into our third loops once again. So starting with the same stitches joining into the third loop, work a half double crochet. You're then going to half double crochet into the third loop of each stitch all the way across to your chain two space. When you come across to your chain two space, into that space, work two half double crochet stitches, chain two, and work two more half double crochet stitches. Repeat that all the way around, half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch, all the way across to the chain two space, in your chain two space, work two half double crochets followed by chain two and a half two double two half double crochet stitches and uh, then continue on when you come to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch at the end of this round six you should have a total of 92 stitches at the end of your round six join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round seven, we're going to begin by chaining four. And this chain four counts as a double crochet stitch and a chain one. Skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next stitch chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way across to your chain two space. When you come to your chain two space, into the chain two space, work two double crochet stitches, chain two, and two double crochet stitches all into the same space. You're now going to repeat that across. So into your first stitch, double crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into your next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Repeat all the way across to your chain two space, and uh, work your two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Repeat that all the way around, back to your first stitch, and when you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the third stitch of that starting chain four. At the end of round seven, you're chaining one and joining with a slip stitch into that third chain of the starting chain four. You're then going to chain one. We're now going to work a half double crochet into each stitch, starting with the same stitches joining. Into the 
and into each chain one space all the way across to our chain two space. So half double crochet in each chain one space and the top of each stitch all the way across to the chain two space. When you come to your chain two space, work two half double crochets. Chain two and two more half double crochet stitches. Repeat that all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of your round eight, join with the slip stitch in the first stitch. You are now going to repeat rows three to eight, uh, and depending on which size you would like, if you're working the small and medium size, then you're going to want to repeat rounds three. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, once more, and then repeat row th around uh, three once more. So repeat rounds three through to eight once, and then repeat round three. If you are working the size large and extra large, you're going to repeat your rounds three through to eight twice more, and then repeat your round three. Once you have done that, you can meet me back here. You're going to make four of these squares and I highly recommend that you block this project. The square corners can get kind of wonky as you're working them, so block them to size. For your small medium, you want your square to be about 16 and a half to 17 inches. If you're working the size large and extra large, your squares will be approximately 20 by 20 inches. So block your squares, work four of them, and uh, then meet me back here and we'll piece them together and put on our edging. Once you have all four of your squares worked, you're going to join them together in the shape of an L. So you'll want three squares and then one, um, so three squares joined on one side and then one joined down at the bottom to your bottom square. You'll want it in that shape of the L. To join them together, I used a slip stitch flat join working in the back loops only of each piece. So start by joining with a slip knot. I just joined into the two openings, uh, your two corner spaces there. Just join with a slip stitch. You're then going to, working through both thicknesses and in the back loops only, slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. So I'm pick up the back loop of that piece that's closest to you. You'll have both of them have the bo uh, front side facing and then working in the back loop only of the next stitch, simply, simply slip stitch. So back loop only, back loop only, and slip stitch. Make sure as you're working you're not skipping any stitches. You don't want to have any bunching or any gaps left in your fabric and I will work a few more stitches here just so you can see what it looks like. You're going to have a nice uh, seam that is flush with the texture on either side and it's a fairly strong joint so it's a great one for this poncho. So I'm just going to work a few more stitches just like that. So that's what your seam will look like 
and this is all on the front side. So go ahead, join your squares together in the shape of an L using this slip stitch flat join, and uh, then meet me back, to, back here, and I'll show you how to work the final join to bring your poncho together. Once you have crocheted your pieces together in the shape of an L, you're going to lay it in front of you, uh, kind of like a misshapen V with your short end up here and then your longer end over here. You're then going to do one last fold. So fold the long part of your L down and I'm folding it down in behind and lining it up with the panel or the piece that's here in front. I know it's really hard to see on the camera because I have limited space at the moment. And then you're going to take the other small short end. If you head over to my blog, it might be easier to see. And you're just going to fold that one back and you're going to join it with the piece that is uh, tucked in behind here. So you'll want to join the short end of the L, fold it over, and join it with the piece that it meets up with in back. This is um, so the front and the back of your poncho should be a, a full panel that's kind of in the shape of a diamond. It's coming to the point at the front. So then you're going to simply slip stitch, flat join, once again, this final piece together. Uh, once you're done that, you can weave in any ends. I've lost the end of my yarn here. Uh, once you're done that, you can weave in any ends and then meet me back here and we will do the edging and the neckline of our shawl. So go ahead, slip stitch, fat join, that last seam. Okay, so I've now joined my poncho together. So this is my neck up here at the top, and then it comes down to the point at the front and the back. We're now going to work a little bit of a neckline. So what we're going to do is we're working on around uh, the inside uh, of that opening up there at the top of your poncho. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by working a round of double crochet stitches. Uh, so you, anywhere on your poncho, I'm going to join it down here simply because I want to be able to show you how to work this corner piece fairly quickly. You're just going to join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. You're working under both loops and you're going to start by chaining three. This chain three will count as a double crochet stitch. Next you're going to double crochet into each stitch all the way across to the first point. Uh, so where you have joined two of your squares together. Double crochet all the way across to that point. When you come to the points in your poncho, you're going to work double crochet three stitches together. So you're going to work the first part, yarn over, insert your hook into the chain two space, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two. You're going to work another one into the seam, or sorry, into the second uh, chain two space, yarn over, insert your hook into the second chain two space, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two. You'll have three loops on your hook. You're going to do that one more time into the next 
uh, chain two space, yarn over into the chain two space, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four. Then you're going to continue working double crochet stitches into each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, uh, whether you're working the large size or the small size, you're going to want to have an even number of crochet stitches. So keep going all the way around to the next point where you join and uh, work a double crochet three together then double crochet in each stitch. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your chain three, your starting chain three. Once you come all the way around at the end of round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your starting chain three and then chain one. We're now going to work around a front and back post double crochet stitches. So starting with this starting chain three, work a front post double crochet around the starting chain three, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across to the stitch before your double crochet three together. So this will differ depending on where you joined around the neckline of uh, your poncho, but you're going to continue front and back post double crochets until you reach the stitch before that double crochet three together. When you reach that stitch before, depending on what you've just worked, so I've worked a front post double crochet, you're going to work a front or back post double crochet three together around the next three stitches. Okay, so if you've ended with a back post double crochet, you'll be working a front post double crochet three together. If you've ended with a front post like I have, a back post three together double crochet. So yarn over, bring your hook, I'm bringing my hook in back of my work for the back post, insert it around the post of the next stitch, back to front, out through the back again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. You're going to do that again, uh, back post, double crochet around the post of the entire double crochet three together. So I'm inserting it around that entire stitch, pulling up my loop and pulling through two, and then repeat that once again, back post double crochet around the next stitch, four loops on your hook, pull through all four. You're then going to continue your pattern. Next I'll work a front post double crochet around the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the next. Repeat that all the way across to the next stitch prior to that double crochet three together. Then work your three together stitch and continue around to your first stitch. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round two, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Now for the next five rounds, you're going to simply repeat your round two. So chain one, front post, double crochet around that first stitch and alternate with the back post, double crochet around the next stitch. Repeat that across to your front or back post, double crochet three together, and uh, then work your three together stitch, either front or back post stitch, and uh, continue around to the next one, repeat, and then back to your first stitch. So you'll want to have a total of, um, so here, I'll just show you, I'm at my corner, the stitch prior to the three together stitch, 
it's going to be a front post, double crochet three together. So there's one, front post, double crochet three together, and front post, double crochet, draw through all four, and then back post around the next stitch. So you're going to continue to do that all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the first stitch, chain one, repeat. You want to work a total of six of these front post, back post, double crochet rounds. Uh, so this is rounds uh, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so once you reach the end of round seven, uh, meet me back here. At the end of round seven, if you are working the small size, you're going to join with a slip stitch in your final stitch, chain one, and then simply single crochet into each stitch all the way around, joining with a slip stitch into your first stitch. If you are working the size large or extra large, you're going to go ahead and work four more rounds, so rounds eight, nine, ten, and eleven of front and back post double crochet stitches, and then work uh, for round twelve your final single crochet round. Uh, so depending what size you're working, if you're working the small size, go ahead work one round of single crochet stitches. If you're working the large or the extra large, work four more rounds of front and back post double crochets, followed by one round of single crochet, and then the neck of your poncho is complete. You can then meet me back here and we will work the final edging. Once you have the neckline worked of your poncho, this is the large size, just so you can see how wide it is, you're then ready to start the edging of your poncho. Now the edging of your poncho is worked very similar to the neckline. We're going to continue that front and back post uh, double crochet look throughout. So what we're going to do is anywhere on the bottom edge of your poncho you're going to join and when you join you're going to want the front side facing. Uh, I'm going to join down here by the corner just so I can show you how I'm going to work it. You're just going to join with a slip stitch and then chain three as you did before which counts as your double crochet stitch. You're then going to, for the round one of your edging, you're simply going to double crochet into each stitch across, uh, I have a knot there, I'm going to work over it, uh, across to the point in your poncho. So you're just going to work over to the first point and depending on where you started in your poncho, uh, it will be sooner rather than later. When you come to the first point of your poncho, you're going to work three double crochet stitches into that chain two space. So there's one, two, and three. Three double crochet stitches all into the chain two space and then continue around working a double crochet into each stitch. You're going to do that all the way around that bottom edge of your poncho and then uh, join with a slip stitch into the top of your starting chain three. At the end of round one of your edging Join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three. You're then going to chain one. 
Now, just as we did for the neck, we're going to work some front and back posts, double crochet stitches, beginning with the front post, around the same stitches joining that chain three. And then back post, double crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across to the chain two space where you worked your three double crochet stitches. I'm just going to continue working over to it. When you come to those three double crochet stitches, as I have here, into your center stitch, you're going to work three stitches around that same stitch. So I worked a back post double crochet stitch around the first of those three stitches. Depending on where you joined, that might be a front post. So then, uh, around that center stitch, I'm going to begin by working a front post double crochet. And then around the post of the same stitch, a back post double crochet. And then again, the same stitch, a front post double crochet. And those might be the opposite stitches again, depending on where you started around the edging. Then I'm just going to continue on working. A, I finished off with a front post double crochet. I'm gonna work a back post double crochet followed by a front post double crochet all the way across to the next chain two space where I've worked the three stitches and then I'm going to repeat what I just did. You're going to continue all the way around, join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. To finish off our poncho we are going to work three of these rounds. So this is round two, three, and four. At the end of round four you'll simply join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch fasten off and weave in your ends and at the end of round four your poncho is complete you can go ahead and enjoy it so that's all there is to working the wandering poncho thank you so much for joining me when, uh, once again while you're here I invite you to subscribe take a look around and I look forward to see seeing all of your finished products be sure to tag me on social media so I could admire them until next time happy crocheting bye Thank you.